Welcome to Canadian Justice. I'm Christine Van Gyne, and today we're going to be talking about a part of Canada's charter that is the subject of perennial debate and that is once again in the spotlight, the notwithstanding clause. The notwithstanding clause, or section 33 of the charter, allows legislatures to enact laws notwithstanding certain rights guaranteed in the charter. This clause was part of the historic compromise it took to enact Canada's charter, but it remains controversial. Recently, Conservative Party leader Pierre Polyev hinted that he may use the notwithstanding clause to enact certain types of sentences for violent criminals following findings of unconstitutionality of those sentences by Canadian courts. While Section 33 has been used by provinces, it has never been invoked federally. It's sometimes referred to as the override clause, but even this characterization is controversial. Are we entering a new era with the notwithstanding clause? How should we think about the complexities around its use, history, pre-charter rights, its preemptive use, or the ability of courts to review government action once the clause has been invoked? Many of these questions are considered in a brand new book, The Notwithstanding Clause and the Canadian Charter of Rights, the, and the Canadian Charter, Rights, Reforms, and Controversies, edited by Peter Biro. Here today to discuss the book is Peter Biro, as well as Marion Sandilens, who contributed a chapter on Quebec's Bill 21 and 96. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Now, let's start at the beginning with some of the basics. I gave a bit of an introduction about Section 33 and how it is used. Um, Peter, what can you add to that explanation? Well, what I'd say is, in general, we know that the Charter protects uh, all of our fundamental rights and freedoms, at least the ones that are enumerated in the Constitution. Uh, there are two regimes in that charter for the regulation or restriction of rights. One of them is Section 1. We Maybe we'll come to discuss that a little later. The other is Section 33, the Notwithstanding Clause, which allows, as you said, uh, the provincial legislatures and Parliament, although it hasn't yet resorted to it, to, uh, to restrict... Uh, the essentially to uh, to allow a, a law that infringes rights, certain enumerated rights, uh, to operate notwithstanding the infringement, and it does that uh, with respect to the rights and freedoms set out in Section Two, what we call the fundamental freedoms, such as freedom of expression, freedom of conscience and religion. Uh, freedom of assembly, freedom of association, and also with respect to the legal rights in Section 7 uh, to 15 and the equality rights in Section 15. Um, and there are certain formal parameters or, or criteria that have to be complied with, not very many. Essentially, the notwithstanding clause can be invoked with respect to a, to a law for a period of five years, at the end of which time it sunsets, unless it is uh, reenacted. And then the other formal requirement, of course, is the one I just mentioned. It must uh, apply only to one or more of those specified rights in Section 2 uh, and 7 to 15. So there are but certain rights. Really, so there are certain rights that the Section 33 cannot be used uh, on, uh, for example, voting rights, mobility right. rights, and, and of course, there's that uh, five year sunset clause. So if a, a legislature wants to continue to have that law in force, they would need to invoke again after five years. Um, now, Marion, Section 33 is a part of Canada's charter because it was part of uh, the historic compromise that let that that allowed for the charter to you know even be a part of Canada's constitution. It was it was included for a reason. Uh, we've only got about a minute. What do you want to say in that minute about that history? Well, Thomas Axworthy has a chapter in, in Peter's book, and it talks about the compromise and how we wouldn't have a charter without Section 33. It was, in fact, some Western premiers, the premiers of Saskatchewan and Alberta, who had concerns about courts interfering with things like social policy, which led them to want to uh, demand um, a Section 33, a, non, a notwithstanding clause. And, and that's the compromise that led to the charter being enacted. Yeah, so I mean, one of the things that's always interesting to me about when the discussion of uh, Section 33 takes place is people say, oh, this <clears throat> this is uh, a violation of our Constitution. But it is really important uh, to remember, even if we may disagree 
with its inclusion in, in our charter or the way it's being used, it is actually, in fact, a part of Canada's constitutional framework. Um, we'll get into some of the deeper questions when we come back from this commercial break.